Hi everyone, this is Jillian from Jewish Workshops. It is a pleasure to be joining all of you today and we are extremely privileged to have Sarhana Radcliffe on the line. Before we get started, I'd love to see who's joining us and where you're from. So if this is your first time on a webinar with us, welcome. You should see a GoToWebinar control panel on the right hand side of your screen and you can just put your first name and where you're joining us from into the chat box. I'd love to be able to welcome you. And I'd also love to give a huge shout out to Sarahana's family circle members. If you are here with us, please feel free to also put a little star next to your name so that I can welcome you as a special member as well. Okay, this is so exciting. I see people coming on in. Welcome Hannah from Jerusalem and Jamie from Texas. Welcome Eva from Milwaukee, Maya from New York, Debbie from New York. Welcome Sam from Denver and Ricky from San Jose. Welcome Leah from New Jersey, Yael from Baltimore, Esther from New York, Mendy from New York. Welcome Esty from Lakewood and Suzanne from Maryland. Welcome Naomi from West Orange and Gail from New York, Hanala from Lakewood, Sue from California, Dina from Egypt, Shandy from Savannah. Welcome Sarah from London. And Shawnee from Chicago, Rena from Toronto, Naomi from Antwerp. This is amazing to see people from all over the world. Welcome, welcome to all. Esther from Queens and Nancy from LA, Tahila from Farakaway, welcome. I could probably be here for the next 20 minutes, but we have a lot to cover, so I'm going to have a big warm welcome to everybody. Um, as people continue to flood in from all over the world, it is likely that we'll hit capacity, so please make sure to stay on. We don't want you to get locked out. As I mentioned, we've got so much to cover today. Over the past six years, Sarah Hanna has brought her expertise in parenting and relationships to our Jewish workshops community. And today, Sarah Hanna is going to introduce a brand new and extremely important topic that prompted over 1,500 parents to sign up for today's class. Whether you're raising an actual toddler or confronting a school-aged child acting like a toddler or dealing with a teen responding like a toddler, or you or your spouse are actually having a toddler meltdown of your own, which I am definitely guilty of, understanding this crucial stage of life will unlock the key to many parenting and personal mysteries. So make sure to stay on the line to explore this hot topic and stick on until the very end to get your questions answered and hear about this one-time chance to join Sarahana week after week for a full live online program at a special discounted rate just for attending today. Uh, please feel free to share your questions right here in this question box. And like I mentioned, we're going to get to as many as possible live on the line um, a little bit later on. So please feel free to put them in at any time and I will make sure that we get to as many as possible. It is truly an honor to be hosting Sarah Hanna Radcliffe today. A registered member of the College of Psychologists of Ontario, Sarah Hanna has been practicing marriage, parenting, and individual counseling for over 40 years. Sarah Hanna is a well sought after lecturer on stress management, parenting, anger management, and emotional well being. She is the author of Raise Your Kids Without Raising Your Voice, The Fear Fix, Make Yourself at Home, and five other books on family life and emotional well being. Sarhana, we are so grateful that you are joining us today. I'm going to go ahead and pass the microphone over to you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm just trying to get my little whatever screen on. I can't quite. There we go. Okay, I'm all set up. All right, I'm very excited about this topic as well because um, it brings together just a lot of the psychology that... Um, works in parts so in other words that we there's so much information in the field of psychology today that we can kind of zero in on different techniques and different uh, philosophies and everything but this what we're going to look at brings a lot together so um, i know that some of you will recognize various components of it but we're going to synthesize it in a way that you probably have not yet done and hopefully we're going to get some very good results so uh, from doing this so let's just see for a second, let's go back. Okay, we're going to, first of all, start with a basic philosophy uh, that we're going to need in order to understand how to relate to the inner toddler and even to our actual toddlers. Um, and that is the theory of parts in psychology. I know that a lot of you 
do know about this, but so just bear with me for the three or four minutes. We're going to um, give that part of the framework over. Um, and you can just nod along because you know this, okay, if you do know it. Otherwise, here's what's new. I want us all the way through today's webinar to think of ourselves as a bus um, and a bus that has a front seat, a steering wheel, um, ignition key, brake and gas pedal, um, and that there will be some part of our personality that sits in this bus in that driver's seat and makes the bus go in the direction that we want it to go. And then there's a bunch of passengers in the back of the bus um, and there sits, one of them is our inner toddler. Okay, that's, that's the one that's, um, it acts like a toddler, which we will look at soon, what we mean by that. But the passengers in a person's bus are all the ages and stages, even the ones they have not yet reached. So we have parts that are even older than us, uh, archetypes and wise parts and so on. And um, we have parts that are our infant parts, that are our babies, so a whole gang back there. We have some that are pretty healthy and some that are a little challenged or messed up or whatever. Okay, so everybody has a bus like this. And above the bus, if you can picture almost like a lighthouse with a little curtain around it, in that lighthouse above the bus, way up there maybe in the sky, it's kind of floating lighthouse, there's a person who lives in there called the witness, okay, a part of our structure. It's the observer who can always look down and see who is in the driver's seat. Um, we can, I'm going to give you a little hint on how we can tell at least what age person is in the driver's seat of our bus. But that witness, it's there right now in all of you. In order for your witness to be effective, you need another part, so to speak, to open the curtain on that lighthouse and tell the witness, look down. Tell me, observe, who's driving my bus, All right? So um, if your bus is going where the bus should go, and I always say, let's say we're going from, just say, New York to California, and you look down and you see that you're well on the way to your destination, to your goal, in other terms, to what we want to accomplish, to our life goals. If you're all well on your way to where you want to go, then it must be somebody driving your bus who is old enough to read the map and who knows how to operate the vehicle. On the other hand, if your bus is rolling over in the mud, crashing into walls and so on, then it's probably somebody who's too young to drive, who doesn't know how to work the vehicle, doesn't know how to drive the bus or read the map or get to where you want to go. Sometimes that'll be a teenage driver, but sometimes it's going to be, today we're going to focus on when the toddler gets in the driver's seat. That's what we're going to look at. So um, no matter how old we are, <laughs> okay, our toddler can just like leap over the barrier between the driver's section and the passenger section, you know, push out that adult and take over before we know what's happened. And all of a sudden we're behaving ourselves in ways that are not going to get us where we want to go with ourselves or with our relationships or with our goals in life. Um, so we're going to see how we intervene with that. And the techniques that we're going to look at for working with inner toddlers, the part of us that's driving the bus at the wrong time. And there's a good time to have the inner toddler. That's when you want to be playful with your children, with your grandchildren, okay? Then you can have your inner toddler driving your bus. Other times, um, you know, when you don't want to be so playful, uh, you probably need an adult to get you where you want to go. So, um, yeah. Now, how does it happen that the inner toddler all of a sudden arrives in the front seat? There are two ways where our bus can get hijacked by a part that is not going to get us to where we want to go. One is an external trigger or provocation in the world. And there's lots of those, but a common one for parents are the actual children that we're raising, okay, uh, including our actual toddlers, babies, kids, school-age kids, teenagers, and of course there's our spouse. All of these people that we live with can trigger our toddler state at any time. And the other way, uh, that's through what they say and what they do, okay, They're, through their activities, they can trigger us. But the other way of getting triggered is actually through our thoughts, our own thoughts, our beliefs, our feelings, 
um, our own words and our own actions, actually. We can trigger ourselves um, by starting to think the wrong things. And we'll look a little bit more um, at this later. When I say think the wrong things, I don't want to say there's wrong thoughts, but we we'll say thoughts that could trigger parts of us um, to show up in the driver's seat. I'll just give you an example of that. Like, let's say in our family, there's um, a child who refuses to listen, an, an actual child. When I refer to the inner child, I'm always going to say inner child. Okay, that's the one that's in us. The inner toddler is in us or the inner toddler is in our nine-year-old, our 18-year-old, our 40-year-old spouse or whatever, okay? Um, so I'll say inner. And if I'm saying child or kid, okay, just because this could get confusing, I'm going to just say child or kid, right? So, um, so let's say an actual child is, um, has made a mess just after we cleaned up, we're tired, and um, that child is breaking the rule of take your stuff out of the room when you're finished with it. So that's an example of an external situation that might trigger a frustrated inner toddler, okay? Um, but another kind of situation is where nobody bothered us, but we started thinking some thoughts, you know, like, I don't know, why is my life going the way it is? Or how come, you know, everybody else's kids are so successful and mine are having such problems or whatever. We just start thinking, okay? Um, so this is kind of what I referred to a little bit as a wrong thought, um, but, but let's not judge our thoughts. We'll just say, there's, we can give a whole class on how we get these thoughts in our head, but we'll just say for now that that might cause a toddler, a helpless or frustrated or angry or, um, you'll see what I mean soon, tied up in knots kind of toddler to get into the driver's seat. So we have those two ways of getting what we think or feel or say or do um, can put our toddler in the driver's seat and um, what other people do, okay? So everybody, as I said, has a bus. That's the way personality is organized. And uh, we're a conglomeration of real parts. It's not just a metaphor. These real parts actually have their own neurology. They have their own, um, that is, they have their own wiring, okay? They have their own life. They have their own physiology and their own feelings. They're real, okay? And we are made of all these parts. So uh, knowing that can help us deal with everybody in the best way possible. If we ignore this reality, we're going to miss the mark quite a lot. Okay, so let's learn now a little bit more about the inner toddler and its characteristics. Um, because inner toddlers are actually just like actual toddlers, real toddlers that you've met. Um, if you're raising a toddler right now, then take a good look at that kid and that child's responses to life. And that'll highlight for you what is going on sometimes inside of you and your other loved ones. Um, if you're dealing with somebody who's inner toddler has been triggered, whether that's your spouse or your mother or your sister or your kids, this webinar today should help you understand what's going on inside of them and introduce to you um, a bit of what you're going to want to, how you're going to want to handle that to bring out a, the best situation possible, not waste your time or breath, and also not get triggered yourself. Um, now, if your own inner toddler has been triggered or tends to get triggered regularly over and over again um, by these same people, probably, um, then uh, this webinar today should help you um, strengthen your adult part to actually come to your own rescue. So the big goal for today's webinar is to learn to identify inner toddler states um, in ourselves, in our loved ones, and even in our colleagues and friends and neighbors, okay? And to acquire some effective strategies for helping ourselves deal with the inner toddler and other people and helping ourselves best respond to them for the best outcomes in that moment, okay? So, um, all right, what do we mean by adjust? Uh, we've been, it will help us adjust our expectations too of what's going to happen here um, so that 
we're not thrown off guard. And part of that is alone what will help our inner toddler not get triggered. The more you know, the more you can prevent your own inner toddler from um, re being triggered, being called into the driver's seat. So your knowledge is going to help you with that. I'll just give you an example. Suppose we have a 10 year old child who is struggling with a math problem and uh, is getting really frustrated there and is starting to tear up his paper and throw down his pencil and scream, I'm not doing this, okay? Um, he's really upset. I'm gonna say that his level of response is not what a 10 year old is capable of. Okay. The fact that he's tearing up his paper, throwing down his pencil, screaming and turning red in the face and maybe stomping off or whatever, I don't know, you know, means that he himself has his inner toddler in the driver's seat. And we'll look at why when we look at the nature of the inner toddler soon, but just believe me for now, and I'm sure you buy into this, that he's not acting like a 10 year old, all right? He's acting like a little kid. Um, now, what we're naturally inclined to do about it will usually miss the mark. And I'm going to ask you to put in the chat box right now what you think a typical parent might do about this. Maybe not you, because maybe parents like you who attend workshops like this, some of you are very, very knowledgeable and could be teaching the class yourself. I know that. Um, so think about what other people might do, what other, what other parents might do um, to uh, handle the situation of the kid who's refusing to finish his homework and who's just, you know, having a royal hissy fit about it. Could you put that in, and Jillian, would you might be, or who is ever monitoring this, could you read the answers out loud for us as they come Absolutely. in? age. Yes, we this might is, tell the child to grow up. <laughs> sit down, do your homework and grow up, yeah. This is unacceptable. Please sit back down. Let's try again. Yes, we might direct his behavior. Um, that's very common, actually. We see a child who's, I don't know if we use the word misbehaving anymore, but we see that his behavior is inappropriate for the task at hand, and we might redirect his behavior to tell him, sit down, we're gonna start from the top, okay, whatever, yep. Ignore and wait till the tantrum passes. Sometimes we might do that, yeah. A lot of parents will give advice, call a friend for help, let's call your teacher. Um, threaten to lose something if they don't do it. Yell yeah. or threaten, time out, calm down, um, scream and punish. <laughs> we have a wide range of things. So yell, calm down. Yeah, go to your room, send them to their room, give them a timeout, take a break. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of times we will actually start talking to the child about what he's doing right then. Um, so we have in, in this uh, selection of responses, which I appreciate. Um, sometimes we'll see a child behave like that, and we'll just immediately address his behavior, it's inappropriate, go to your room. By address his behavior, what we'll try to do is stop his behavior uh, right then. Uh, there's a lot we can say about that, <laughs> um, but it's not gonna be very helpful in the big picture. We'll just leave it at that for this moment. Um, but other people will try to talk to the child actually. Even if you say calm down, that's an instruction for the child. And if the child's having a huge fit right then, a toddler temper tantrum, if you will, he's not going to be able to calm down because he cannot process your words, okay? Now, especially if you start talking to him about, oh, you know, let's sit down, let's look at the math problem, let's think this through, it can't be that hard, I'm sure your teacher didn't send you, you know, homework that you wouldn't be able to do, let's, you know, and blah, 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 blah to the kid, the talking is going to completely miss the mark because of the nature of the toddler. So we're gonna to revisit this in a few minutes, this example, where you're gonna be able to explain to me what part of the toddler's nature is going to make that a useless waste of our time. Okay, so I'm not gonna say yet what we would do about it. Maybe we'll come back later. Um, but similarly, let's say it was our spouse who was in charge of bedtime that night, 
and you know was putting the kids to bed and after some very lengthy period of time you hear this yelling upstairs and it's not coming from the kids it's coming from your spouse okay well he seems to have gotten frustrated somewhere along the line and is a, is yelling the kids into bed and you let's say have read all the parenting books and you don't want your kid to be yelled into bed um, and your spouse marches down the stairs, you know, after yelling, this could be the mother or the father, I don't, you know, whatever, it's your partner. Um, so what is a typical response to one spouse? Um, maybe not yours again, but what do you think people might say or do um, when the screaming spouse shows up? Just put that in the chat box also, because this is another example of the spouse being overtaken by an inner toddler. We call it ego state. Ego state just means part of the personality, um, or for our purposes, a passenger on the bus, okay? <laughs> so all these words mean the same thing. Ego state, passenger on the bus, part of the personality, um, maybe even schema. There's a few words that all mean the same thing here. But anyways, if your full grown adult partner is reduced to hysteria at putting the kids to bed, then perhaps it's a toddler who's trying to put the kids to bed, right? And what do what might one say to one's spouse upon seeing that person? So, um, yeah, have well, you got any answers there? Oh, yes. Um, what's going on? Calm down. This isn't good for the kids. Why are you screaming at the kids? Um, sounds frustrating. Do you need some time to process your feelings? Ask what happened. Um, maybe yell at him and not at the kids, tell them you're out of line, you've got to stop this, I'll take care of it. Every time is the same, you have to calm down, I'll just do it myself. Um, critically tell them what they're doing wrong. Hey honey, talking. would you like to help me out? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of talking. But what might happen there is our spouse's aggressive behavior to the children actually triggers our own helpless inner child okay so our toddler comes to the surface and then next thing you know we're an inner child also trying um, to change the spouse's behavior some of those responses do indicate um, a more compassionate nurturing parent type response um, but any response with a lot of words is not going to meet the mark and Again, let's just look now at some of the characteristics of the inner toddler to see why talking to a person who's in that state, no matter what we say, is likely to be either a waste of our breath or actually a destructive and re-triggering um, activity. So we're gonna we're gonna say this. Okay, so now let's just define toddler um, because baby, you know, we're not, that's we're not talking about babies here. We're talking about somebody who is old enough to move around, um, start to get into some troubles, and start to be curious about the world, wanting to explore and learn. Somebody who's developing very rapidly a lot of new skills, talking, um, just becoming more independent. This kid typically is one and a half to three and a half years old. As they get to be three and a half, when you know they're moving into what we might call a preschooler age, four and four and four is already a preschooler. Five is a kindergarten kid, you know. So, toddler is somewhere one, let's say, I don't know, 13 months to 24, 25, 26, I don't know, months. Um, you know, like two and a bit, or no, sorry, I did say three and a half here. Um, it depends on your toddler. And I'm going to say this too. Some toddlers are finished the toddler stage by two and a half, okay? And some are not finished the toddler stage till three and a half, actual toddlers now. There is a great deal of variance in the speed, rate, and depth at which toddlers develop. So that's why I'm saying that. Some kids are completely, you know, verbal and understanding language, um, you know, at a very young age. Um, you know, 18 months or whatever, and others are just beginning to speak when they're, you know, uh, two years old and older. Um, the walking, the, the coasting, the sitting, all of these things, all of these early developmental milestones have a great deal of range to them, of variance. But we're going to say this is a small, mobile, um, slightly verbal or pretty verbal 
human being who is learning to use the toilet and um, feed himself and things like this. That's the toddler. But the interesting thing about the toddler is he's what I'm going to call pre-educable. Okay, he's pre-rational, which is why our examples where parents or spouses are using words to approach the toddler are going to miss the mark. Um, the toddler is not ready for the full package of uh, the full array of educational uh, interventions that we can make with our older kids um, or, or teens or adult children, spouses and friends, the boundary setting, limit setting, um, rational, logical, um, negotiating, all of that. No, the toddler is not up to any of that. So our interventions with actual toddlers and with inner toddlers have to be guided towards somebody with a cognitive deficit, so to speak. You know, they're they're not going to be able to get it. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, just to put your own words again in the chat box to describe the character of a toddler what you think for good medium and, and bad so you know like the challenging part um let's get some words just to describe the typical toddler when you hear the word toddler what comes to your mind let's just get a bunch of words together okay inquisitive stubborn unregulated insecure, dependent, tantrum. Um, they think they're the center of the world. Self-centered, fetch, impulsive, reactive, active, irrational, insanely cute, curious and young, happy, precious, um, volatile, short-sighted, adorable, easily frustrated, irrational, yummy, needy, fun, um, emotional, happy, independent, stretching limits, joyful, contrary, immature, funny, good self-esteem, innocent, limited understanding. Great, uh, these are great words. Me. Yeah, these are really good. And we see that what is keeping the toddler alive in our house is all of the positive characteristics there, the yummy, the you know, delicious, the funny, the cute, the adorable, um, the innocent, you know, all of those, the bright side of toddlerhood. And the bright side of toddlerhood doesn't present a challenge for us. It's the other words that you're reading there, all of which are true good descriptions of the toddler nature. Um, because the child is exploring and becoming more independent, this age child is now becoming uh, less compliant or sometimes outright defiant. Um, that child often feels things like we, you heard some of those words pointed to insecurities, um, fragilities, helplessness, but there's also stubborn, irrational, needy, yes, you said dependent, baby as you mature, I think you said this, um, perhaps picky and strong-willed, um, emotionally labile, big feelings, little control. Okay, so it's the it's that last cluster of words, not the happy, cute thing, but the rest of them, that can make parenting this age child a, quite a challenge. And it makes dealing with that age challenge in ourselves or in others challenging. So um, let's look, because at, at one of the, the, the first things that's going to happen here, as the toddlers need to grow up and to explore the environment and to become more competent, ever more independent, that child's need raises a lot of safety issues. So, you know, I'm going to look at in this next section ways for us to identify um, a toddler in other people. Okay, so we'll start off with an actual toddler and then we'll look at some inner toddlers. So a toddler who is exploring the kitchen um, and the strength of his muscles and is just endlessly curious and knows that the cookie jar is on top of the fridge. I'm going to turn this off and get rid of any problems. Um, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, the, the, that kid, he may climb, if he can, take a stool, climb the stool, climb on the counter, climb up on top of, you know, the appliances. And you come in the kitchen, you, there he is, you know, with the kitchen cookie jar that's up high, you know, with his hand in it or something. And 
you're terrified, right? But that climbing on things is a typical um, child, what do you call it, adult, sorry, sorry, toddler behavior, right? That's a typical toddler behavior. Now, we're going to see that same disregard for safety and the desire for independence merge in other age people, like your nine-year-old, for example. Let's say you're on a family hike and you're all marching together into the woods and um, you, uh, you're walking, but the nine-year-old runs off ahead, turns around a corner and he's off, okay? This nine-year-old doesn't look back, doesn't tell you I'm running ahead, doesn't wait for you to catch up, just keeps going thicker, you know, into the thick woods further and further because uh, one of the words that I want to highlight there is self-centered, I think somebody said, um, narcissistic, okay, self-involved, blinders on, like there's nobody but me and I want to see the woods right now, okay? This is the inner toddler inside a nine-year-old body, okay? Um, now, this could be a 20-year-old, um, one of your kids uh, out, you know, recently got a driver's license, out with friends, wants to go fast in the car, you know, zooming on the highway because it's fun, um, no regard for life, for his life, for the life of his passengers, no regard for anything other than this looks like fun. <laughs> oh, look, the road is clear. And then all of a sudden there's a truck coming out of a side street that, you know, the lights were dark, we didn't see anything. Um, but that's how it happens. Inner toddlers in young drivers, okay? Just looks like fun. Um, same thing could happen in a spouse who decides maybe midlife crisis, I think I'll take up this very dangerous sport <laughs> or activity. I'm going to learn to do something which brings death to some people, but you know, it's so fun. It's so fun. I've really got to do this, you know? Um, not considering as, let's say, the middle-aged person adult part of this person might consider that this could have an impact on loved ones if anything goes wrong in the sport even while learning the sport not yet becoming an expert in the sport or even being an expert in the sport i don't know if we're talking about crazy race star race car driving or you know just there are some sports that are just inherently quite dangerous or activities put you can plug it in the way you want but this could happen to an adult whose disregard for safety you know is over is ridden by, it's going to be fun. This looks like fun. <laughs> I got to do it. I want to see if I can do it. Can I do it? You know, that is the inner toddler in a full grown person. Because in adult life, there is more considerations than how much fun it's going to be and whether or not I can master this. <laughs> There's a lot of considerations. But then we might have our own inner toddler, okay, for the same safety issue where we decide, you know, I really got to lose this weight. I've got to, I just got to look great for this wedding that's coming up or just because I'm tired of not fitting into my clothes or whatever it is. So I've had it. I'm going to go on this extreme uh, pill-filled, um, dangerous supplemental-based diet. I know people keep warning me, don't do it. It can wreck your liver or your heart or your who knows what. But you know what? I'm tired of all the old ways. I am going to do this thing. And, um, you know, despite the warnings on, you know, online or the warnings from one's friends or the actual statistics involved, because there's no, you know, rationality here, um, I am going to do what I, I want to do because I want to do it. Okay, like there's that narcissistic quality and disregard for safety merging together. Okay, so those would be examples of the safety issue in toddlers um, that's combined with a very self-centered worldview. Um, there's nobody else and no other consideration. Just what feels right to me right now, what I want to do, and who cares if it could lead to death? You know, like I'm not even thinking about that because I've got my eye on the goal. It's either fun or I need to know if I can do it or I just want to do it. Okay, this is the toddler mentality. So there might be a need for information, guidance, education, and everything here, but <laughs> if people are intervening with these um, toddler states, the reason and the logic 
will be a waste of breath because the toddler is essentially irrational. So we saw that the toddler climbs on top of the appliances, but no matter how many times you explain to the toddler that that isn't safe, the kid will keep doing it because it's so much fun, you know? So uh, your information just falls off, like, you know, things sliding off of Teflon, just like, there's nothing there, nothing sticking, okay? Um, now, let's just see for a second. So your words will not make a toddler go to bed, just for example, let's say um, on your actual toddler, you know, who's running around like a you know, maniac at midnight or something, and you're saying things to the kid like, you're going to be so tired tomorrow. Now, I think you already know that the inner toddler, is for, like that inner toddler belongs in, in people of many ages there, your teenager, your spouse, and yourself. Uh, you're going to be so tired tomorrow, that little piece of information falls right off. It's, it's meaningless. It, it has, it's irrelevant, okay? Um, or to, you know, even an older kid who's still operating with the inner toddler saying, you know, I'm not tired yet, um, and who's been crabby all week, and you're explaining how sleep will improve his mood and he'll be happier tomorrow. It's like, you're speaking Greek. It has no bearing on my current energy level because my toddler's wide awake and I wanna do things now, okay? So like, what are you saying? It's falling off, okay? Uh, even things where we talked, you gave some examples before of punishing the kid. Well, um, even threats of consequence, you know? Well, my, you know, let's see, um, your actual toddler, is screaming and crying in your stroller there or the shopping cart. Um, and you're going to say things like, listen, if you're going to keep crying like this, mommy's not going to take you to the store next time. You know, does this mean anything to your toddler? You might as well be speaking a foreign language as the one you're speaking. It means nothing. Okay. Um, and even referring to past consequences, um, the kid's climbing up there and you're saying, you can't do that. Remember how last time you fell off and you bumped your hand, you had a boo-boo, remember? That wasn't fun, right? Don't waste your breath, okay? It's not going to help you. Those words are zipping by. Feelings of other people that you might want to explain to your toddler, it's not of interest, okay? So the toddler grabs something from another, from the baby uh, let's say maybe it's a three-year-old grabbing something from an eight-month-old and the baby starts to cry. And now you're going to appeal to the child's heart and logic. And you're going to say something like, you see, she's crying. She wanted that toy. You don't want her to be sad, do you? You know, from the toddler's point of view, it's like, <laughs> are you speaking to me? Like, it, your words, don't speak them, okay? That would be one thing. You have to understand that the toddler herself or himself isn't processing your words in any meaningful way. They have nothing to do with the toddler's experience. Your explanations, your rationales, your logic, your warnings and your reminders, all on deaf ears. Um, so if your 12 year old now has an inner toddler that's having a meltdown because he can't play on his device because you told him it's time to get off. There's a time limit that you have, a rule in your house for how many minutes this kid can be playing his game. Um, you know, I'm gonna ask you again, okay? What would a typical parent do while the 12 year old is saying, no, you know, like I have not finished my game and everybody has more time than me. You're the worst parent in the world. You're like, what is the typical parental response to all that? What, what happens? You're, you might be doing this one yourself. <laughs> I don't care. That's disrespectful. No video games tomorrow. I'm taking away your device. I'm not letting you... Um, Oh, you're so ungrateful. I'm not letting you do that again. Don't talk to me like that. A lot of screaming. Take the device away. I know what's best for you, but obviously he wouldn't listen to that. Tell yeah. him that he's ungrateful, pulling the device out of his hands. I'm sorry, playtime is over. 
You see, some, some of those responses show that our own inner toddler has been activated by somebody else's inner toddler. That's one of those provocations where now we're screaming too. Really? Well, then forget your device, okay? I'm going to take it away. You know, um, it's not a logical thought of parenting plan or anything that might actually influence the child's behavior for good. It's just a reaction, which toddlers are good at <laughs> reacting. Um, but, you know, using our uh, adult powers, you know, we can punish and, uh, you know, we can be as irrational as the child, but just in a more power position, right? Um, you know, threatening the child, reminding him of how tired he gets, or reminding him of why we have the rule in place to begin with, um, even reminding him about, or pointing out to him how frustrated his behavior is making you. Any talking that you're doing at that moment to that kid is going nowhere. This, you may identify this, um, where I'm going with this in terms of wait for a teaching moment, you know, before you try to teach somebody. I'm sure you've come across that idea somewhere in your readings or watchings. Uh, we're going to wait for a teaching moment. But we've just been saying that when somebody is all upset, they have so much adrenaline uh, floating through their system that their prefrontal cortex, which is where we do our thinking, is offline. Now, that's a medical physiological fact that when there's too much adrenaline, our prefrontal cortex is definitely compromised and we cannot process the logic, the threats, the rationales, the expla explanations. The prefrontal cortex is not there. But what we haven't been talking about when we say that is that the prefrontal cortex is where our adult lives, okay, in that bus, okay? The prefrontal cortex that's up there in the forehead, that's where the most grown up part of you lives, the part that can use logic. And the limbic system or the heart, the emotions, the feelings, that's where your toddler lives, different part of the brain. So yeah, no use talking prefrontal cortex to prefrontal cortex or adult to adult when there's only a toddler for your audience, right? So you have to be aware of how old the person is that you're talking to in order to be effective. Well. How are we going to be effective? I'm going to ask you another question. If reason is not going to make an impact on the toddler's behavior or on the inner toddler's behavior, how are we going to influence that person's behavior? Okay, if, if we can't use the prefrontal cortex and we can't tell them there's going to be this punishment or you're going to suffer these unpleasant consequences from, you know, being unwell or being tired or whatever, or, or you know, we have rules, whatever it is you want to say, um, you know, what your reasonings are, and why the kid should um, do what you want to do. If we can't do any of that, how do we actually influence a toddler's behavior. Do you have any ideas right now? Let's just see. Because like, actually, you know, I'm going to tell you, we're, we are following this today's webinar with a full length um, parenting course on this. Not parenting course, just course course, because we actually, actually, we're going to address our own inner toddler who needs a lot of help as well. Um, and the marriage toddlers who are playing along there. But anyways, we're going to have a course, okay, that follows this. And we're going to examine that question in depth. But just to see where you're all at, uh, what do you think? How are we going to affect the behavior of a toddler? And you might think about what you do currently to affect your toddler's behavior, how effective that is, if it's an effective technique, or what other people might do. Now we're looking for kind of, you know, something that might work if it's not going to be reason and logic. Um, they say empathize, model behavior, validate, empathy, touch. Um, maybe both people need a little time out before reacting. Uh, distraction, lead by example. Um, lower your own voice, slow down and don't react. Go sit near them for a minute. And, um, go sit near them or go sit away until you know what you're going to be doing. Empathize first and then maybe distract, help them calm down, connect to emotions, action. <laughs> So I'm going to say that a lot of these are on the right track, but we're going to have to learn how to do them. Um, because if we're not going to use the prefrontal cortex, we are going to be using the body, the heart, um, the energy levels, the non-verbals, okay? Because the verbals are not going to help us. Um, 
the primacy of emotion and feeling states in toddlers means that actually our primary teaching tools or intervention tools for toddlers are going to be emotional and body oriented in nature. They're going to draw on nonverbal um, nervous system oriented approaches rather than blah, 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 okay? Um, so from this, we're going to see a couple of implications here. Just for example, we've seen that, let's say an actual toddler squeezes the baby too hard, okay? Um, so explaining why that isn't a good idea isn't the intervention of choice, all right? It's the natural intervention, but why does the toddler care about your words? Okay, this is the thing that we really want to get today, <laughs> that the toddler doesn't care about your words, all right? Cannot process them, is uninterested, and it's just like somebody speaking to you in a completely foreign language, like, whatever, okay? The most you can get out of it when somebody speaks to you in that language is what their face looks like, what their body is doing. You might be able to get a nonverbal hint of what they're about, because if they're screaming at you, you know, their their face, their body language, you know, might convey anger. But um, the actual, you know, don't you ever do that again, you could hurt the baby, you know, that part of it, the words, that's, that's, you don't understand the language, right? They're speaking Chinese or something that you don't speak. Right? Um, similarly, explaining to a tantruming seven-year-old, which is an inner toddler in a seven-year-old kid, that grabbing things out of his brother's hands is not the way to go. You know, he's grabbed it. The brother's yelling. He wants it. There's a fight going on. And you're speaking, right? Saying, we don't grab things out of people's hands. That is unacceptable. I'm afraid you're going to have to give it back to him and then ask, whatever. Okay. Again, it's like, it's Chinese, right? It's like the toddler is in charge right then. So no. Um, or explaining to an irrationally upset 15 year old that you didn't have time to pick up her item at the store that she asked you to pick up. You no, know, if she's like having, she's very, very upset. You no, know, your explanation about traffic and timing and your schedule, meaningless, meaningless. Um, the inner toddler is simply not open to learn from rational, logical information regarding the information itself, consequences, memories, warnings, and all that stuff. We can do some of that when the person's own adult state comes on board. So a seven-year-old actually has an adult state, and a 15-year-old has an adult state, and you have a few of those adult states too. Um, okay. So let's look at this. We've looked at safety, but there's another, um, I want us to identify even more states. We're going to take another look at the toddler states as they manifest as inner toddlers. So irrationality is not the same as the safety issue. It's, um, and it's not even the same as not open to reason. What I mean by irrationality here is actually behavior that doesn't make any sense, okay? Like it just is, it's not only that it's not logical, but it's illogical. Okay, so a kid who has to go to the bathroom, an actual toddler who you're training to go to the bathroom, like you're teaching, maybe you've just toilet trained the kid, it's recent months, and now the kid is playing and clearly has to use the toilet, but won't go because he wants to play longer. We're gonna call this irrational because in a minute, he's gonna have an accident on the floor, um, which is what he does because he won't go. It's not, this is not about reason so much as anti-reason and the same toddler can be in a five or six year old who's engrossed in whatever they're doing, this same kid might need to go to the bathroom and not want to interrupt his activities because he's playing, <laughs> doesn't want to take the time out. To... It's crazy behavior because if you have to go, you have to go. Um, let's see who else, like a, a spouse who's engaged in some unhealthy behavior, whether it's um, overeating or excessive dieting or smoking or drinking too much. Um, that we could say is self-destructive behavior, which is, um, it has no rational basis. It's irrational and comes from the inner toddler states in us. Our most adult sophisticated states wouldn't be so self-destructive. Okay? So, so you, know, you know, instead of giving the person pamphlets about, you know, the consequences of, of unhealthy behaviors, um, we're going to have to find other techniques. Um, now there's another characteristic of toddlers and that is kind of a irration, um, irregularity 
in body rhythms or inability to manage um, bodily cycles. And this comes out in weird sleeping patterns, being overtired, um, not being tired at a standard time of day, getting um, insufficient sleep, won't take a nap. So in an actual toddler, this could be weird eating habits, weird sleeping habits, just dysregulated. They haven't quite, not every kid has um, synced with the world schedule, okay? <laughs> um, so we see this in our 14-year-old who um, is having a big examination at school at 11 o'clock, whatever, a big test, but doesn't want to have anything for breakfast. Um, so this is like instead of fueling herself so that her brain will work at its best, she's not going to have it. Or the 20-year-old university student who stays up all night um, studying for her big exam in the morning, goes to bed at 5 a.m. You know, like um, it's a dysregulation, an inability to align the cycles of the body with clocks, basically, okay? Um, in a spouse, it could be that, um, similar to the other one, but it's an eating issue here. So uh, somebody who's eating too much junk food, despite the fact that the doctor has made a warning about weight or something, or about uh, heart cholesterol, or about di prediabetes, or whatever the doctor has said is, is a problem. Um, but the inner toddler in the person doesn't care about that. But it's a, it's a kind of a regulation problem, similar. Now, we're going to also talk about fears, anxieties, insecurities, and vulnerabilities in toddlers because they're a very small population physically. They're vertical now, and they're big enough to know that they're small in a certain way. Babies are kind of like so far out of it, they don't even know where their body is. But toddlers can feel their helplessness much more, um, with much more consciousness. And as a result, Toddlers are a frightened group of people, generally speaking. They have a bunch of phobias that will disappear for the most part as they get closer to four, five, six years old. Um, the ones whose phobias and fears still remain just have that inborn tendency towards um, the anxiety characteristic, okay? But most of the kids who are fearful at these little, little ages will grow out of a lot of their fears or all of their fears. Um, but let's, but, okay, the age itself is really full of insecurities and the kids become attached to rituals. The ones who still have rituals when they're six, seven, eight years old, and a lot of them may actually have rituals that are part of other disorders like OCD or whatever. Again, most of the rituals are going to fade away, but the little kids, toddlers, it's normal to have a million rituals, a certain kind of pattern for bedtime stories, a certain dish, a certain cup, um, a certain thing they say and do when they visit certain places or they do certain things. These rituals are to help reduce the free-floating anxiety that toddlers experience. So separation anxiety, for example, like not wanting to leave the side of a parent, being very anxious in new situations, um, hiding behind a parent's knees in, you know, when there's a new place, new people, whatever it is, um, that's normal for toddlers. And we may have that toddler operating inside an older kid, teen or adult. So eight-year-olds also have separation anxiety, but when they do, it's actually their toddler state that's active. So we could say that when we have an anxiety disorder ourselves, um, it's not the logical adult part of us that is experiencing the fear. It is the inner toddler that is overwhelmed and fearful in our grown-up body or teenage body or young adult body or you know, nine-year-old body, whatever it is. Um, because that's the basis almost of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, where we're intervening to bring the adult, the prefrontal cortex online to say, well, what's going to happen when you get that needle? Okay, so let's say somebody's phobic of needles. Okay, Their inner toddler is freaking out, feels very helpless and over, overwhelmed. Um, the adult, when you start interviewing the adult, like, well, what is the chance of something bad happening here? How much is it going to hurt between zero and 10? How, how well do you tolerate this? I don't know, whatever CBT intervention. The only reason it works is because it brings the adult into the driver's seat somewhat. Okay, so that, anyways, I'm, we're not going to talk about anxiety disorders here. Um, but I'm just going to say that it's natural for toddlers to feel overwhelmed, confused, uncertain, helpless, and frightened. That's the natural state. And when we feel that way, um, that's our inner toddler calling. 
So, um, I think there was something I was going to say here. Oh yeah, I'll give you a lot, an example. We'll get to using the anxiety soon. Okay, um, communicating and self-regulating emotions is not to be expected in the toddler state. So they don't have great, even some toddlers have, better, have bigger vocabulary than others, but they're not great at explaining, using words, their inner feelings. Um, you know, I'm frustrated because my tower keeps falling down while I'm trying to build it. And I'm putting so much effort into it and it's getting exhausting. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna say so much. They might say, can't do it hard if you're lucky. Um, but the fact that they have trouble aligning a lot of words and descriptive words in general. Um, and that combined with feelings that are strong and big, like frustration, um, is partly what leads to the tantrums and the meltdowns and just the total collapse. So when we see that in our older kids, teens, spouse, and herself, that is our inner toddler can't talk, okay? <laughs> That's what happens. Um, let's see, one second. There's also something interesting that happens in the toddler stage that new emotions are coming on board. So um, whereas babies don't get embarrassed by anything, that's not something that a baby can feel. Toddlers for the first time have body consciousness, feelings of embarrassment, feelings actually of frustration, um, of a certain kind of frustration is new. Um, having a, a strong will or a mind of their own um, that they recognize is new um, guilt and shame. These are coming on board um, and they're new. But we have we can have all of those feelings from our inner toddler as well. So, um, you know, once we feel embarrassment, well, my kids aren't doing as well as my neighbor's kids. That's just, you know, that feeling of insecurity is an inner toddler, a toddler feeling in us. Or, you know, um, us getting triggered by the mess that somebody made in our house, you know, how could you make this mess? We said that before, that's our inner toddler. Um, our own rigidity, strong will, bossiness that shows up in the toddler stage. Um, do it because I said so right now. <laughs> you know, like, uh, it's our inner toddler. Um, difficulty managing our um, upset, you know, you're making me crazy, you're driving me nuts, okay? That's our inner toddler. Um, and our guilt and shame. I'm sorry, I really shouldn't be screaming at you like this. I know what's wrong, okay? Um, I feel small because my inner toddler is small right now. Um, okay, so the real goal here is for us not to get triggered by the inner toddler of other family members, even the toddler himself, the actual toddler, um, and to have our adult parts available to help us know what to do, to speak the language of toddlers and inner toddlers. For this, we're going to have to cultivate a real adult state of confidence, courage, uh, leadership skills, because that will make the toddler feel secure. They're actually going to read our confidence our um, calmness, we call it, we'll say calm confidence, um, our certainty, our relaxation. They're going to read it not through our words, but through our bodies, because our heart rate variability changes when the adult ego state is in the driver's seat. So when the adult is there, um, it actually affects what the heart's going to do. And the heart sends out a pattern to all of those around us, which has been, it's a measurable pattern, so that our anxiety actually sends out an irregular and dysregulated pattern, or our anger. And everybody else does that to us too. But if our adult is in the driver's seat, we will be able to override everybody else's pattern and send out our own wave, our energetic wave of calmness, safety, certainty, um, not certainty that we're right, because who knows if we're right, okay? This year's book says do this, and last year's book says do that, okay? Our certainty that we're in charge making our best call right now, you know? Not that this is going to solve all problems, not that it's even the right solution, 
but our certainty in our leadership, okay, to our own inner child and to the inner child of everybody around us, okay, um, our calmness, our untriggerability, I'm sure that's not a word, <laughs> but that's what I mean. Um, so your adult partner, your adult self is the part that's going to maintain your marriage, not your inner toddler, okay, and your adult Part is going to raise your children effectively, not your inner toddler. Your inner toddler is too young to raise children. Um, and your adult part is going to soothe and heal and calm your own inner child. Um, so let's just see. I said I'd come back to an example of, of fear here, anxiety for our last little example of how this might be applied. Let's say that, I don't know, 10 year old Tammy, she's afraid of monsters still. Uh, she's afraid of maybe she's grown up, maybe it's not monsters now, maybe it's uh, kidnappers. You know, she heard something, she read something, she's terrified of kidnappers. She won't sleep in her own room. Now, at 10, we're going to say, if we're being diagnostic about it, she has a bit of anxiety and you could take her for a whole full assessment and see how much anxiety is it a real anxiety disorder. But let's just say right now, Maybe it's separation anxiety. Who knows what she has? But we know, as parents, she wants to sleep in our room. <laughs> okay, that's what it is with this kid. Um, her inner toddler is terrified to sleep in her own room. That's what's going on. Now, if you get mad at her, I've had enough of this. <laughs> you know, that's not going to help her inner toddler, right? Um, and you start reasoning with her. There's no kidnappers. We've got bars on the window. We've got an alarm system. You're safe in your bed. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. It's not going to help. Her inner toddler doesn't speak your language. Okay. But if you can radiate, as some of you were suggesting, emotional comfort, um, you know, safety, security, um, warmth, and leadership, courage and confidence and get her to stay in her own room because with that you're going you're going to validate of course acknowledge her feelings i know you're scared of the kidnappers i know and i wouldn't spend too much time talking about it because all your words are going nowhere okay i know you're scared would probably be enough okay we're going to sleep in your room okay we can do things we could turn on the light does that make you feel safer would you like the light on you want it on all night okay that's fine and here's the intercom, you know, if you scream, we're going to hear you. All right. Good night, honey. Okay. Like, you know, and what we're doing there is using voice, facial expression, body language, heart rate variability through our certainty of how we're going to handle this. All of that is getting processed. And if the child screams, no, nah, whatever, we just keep repeating it. It's not an option. And this can be applied to many, many different kinds of situations, as we will see in the upcoming course, how we actually will get this strength of character, how we will get our prefrontal cortex online, how we're going to make this all happen for every different kind of situation that we encounter in the inner toddlers of other people um, so that we can be effective and uh, appropriate and be a real leader and help the family. We'll cultivate this adult part to ease the struggle for all of the toddlers who live with us and who work with us. And I'm inviting you to come spend a few weeks learning how to develop those skills. Okay. So I think we'll leave that there, Jillian. Um, yes, thank open you it so questions. much. I'm going to go ahead and um, let everybody know. I see people already asking, how do we continue? Yeah. Um, so if you're ready to continue and join us um, with the full course from Sarah Khan, just come right back into the chat box and let me know. Say, I'm ready, and I will give you all of the information. Uh, I've also seen some amazing questions come in, so okay. we will get to those as soon as possible. Um, but in the meantime, let me just uh, give you the information on how to join the next uh, several weeks in the upcoming course so that you can continue on with Sarahana. 
Um, and I see, yes, yes, how do I do this? Please let me know. Okay, so I am going to get the information to you. We can start registering and I will also get to the questions coming in. So let me tell you how your journey is going to continue. We are going to start with um, the upcoming class. We will actually be starting next week, Foundations of Parenting, a review of the philosophy, psychology, and behavioral strategies that will make child rearing happiest for you and your child. You'll learn how these strategies can be applied to your inner toddler and your children, your spouse, and yourself equally and effectively. Then in session two, we're going to tackle tantrums. Learn the difference between tantrums and meltdowns and discover what causes, reduces, and limits these explosive outbursts in toddlers and inner toddlers, again, of your children, your teens, and your spouse. Um, and then in session three, gaining cooperation. So learn how to apply general strategies to specific toddler issues, such as mealtime, toilet training, bath time, thumb sucking, sharing, playdates, and sibling relationships, again, and so much more. Learn how to help the inner toddler of other family members when it comes to specific tasks of living and navigating family interactions, and gain personal strategies for regulating your own behavioral habits. Um, in session four, we're going to do a deeper dive into gaining cooperation, explore specific challenges such as sleep issues in more detail, and learn to apply insights and strategies to similar issues posed by inner toddlers in children's te children, teens, and adults. Um, in session five, we're going to talk about what's normal. So you're going to explore the gray zones between expected and unexpected behavior in the toddler age range and implications for behavioral patterns at all other ages, including adulthood. When is a behavioral pattern normal and when might professional assessment be helpful or advised? Understand the broad range of developmental patterns and common diagnosis and use this information to help guide your parenting and personal experience. Avoid both anxiety and denial in parenting while you learn to soothe your own inner, inner toddler's fears of the unknown. And then in session six, how toddler behavior triggers adults. Explore how typical toddler behaviors such as aggression, chaotic behavior, social inappropriateness, nose picking, refusal to listen, engaging in dangerous behaviors, and so many more can trigger parental feelings and helplessness, overwhelm, exhaustion, panic, and rage. Identify, understand, and address your personal reactions to the toddler and inner toddler behaviors that occur within your household and yourself. And then we'll finish up the full course with sessions seven and eight, two full hours of Q&A and implementation sessions. So we'll make sure that all of your questions get answered um, and Sarahana will help implement all of these important tools into your day-to-day -day life. So each class will be live and interactive, allowing you to, again, get your questions answered and stay completely anonymous if you choose. They will take place on Thursdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Israel time. And as I mentioned, our first class is starting next week, Thursday, November 3rd. But don't worry if you can't attend a live class. A recording will be available to you in your own personal membership area every Sunday after the live class takes place to listen to or download at your convenience. And if you can't make it to the classes, again, just remember that those um, sessions seven and eight, we will include all questions so you can send those questions in after listening at home um, to the classes themselves. Plus, not only will you have the eight full weeks of live classes, but we're also offering um, this amazing bonus series, How to Foster Independence and Motivation. In this two-part series, discovered how to measure your expectations for your children at every age and give your children the gift of independence and motivation. Plus, fostering healthy habits, foster life habits that will set your child up for success for time management, management responsibility, self-care, and functionality. And you'll also get the EFT, the formula for health and happiness. This practical method gives you the skills to subdue both you and your children's overwrought and anxious emotions. And finally, as we've been talking all um, day about your spouse 
and your spouse's child, um, childlike or toddler behaviors as well. we'll um, we're including the fightless marriage to help liberate, liberate yourself from triggers so that you are free to choose a positive connection building response. You'll now be able to communicate about the hard stuff without dissolving into a fight and begin to enjoy how seamlessly you can problem solve together. It's so important when um, handling you know, your children, especially if you and your spouse are not on the same page. So it was important for us to include this in the entire package that we're offering so that we can make sure that you and your spouse get on the same page, have a more seamless relationship, and then you're able to parent and uh, tackle these challenges of your inner toddler and the toddler themselves if you have one at home. Um, so as you can see, Sarah Hanna will be walking you through various aspects of parenting and emotional well-being to ensure that you and your family are set to thrive. You'll have one-on-one -on -one support throughout the program and will have the unique opportunity to get your personal questions answered that you haven't been able to get answered previously. But most importantly, by investing in yourself and your family now, you will become the peaceful and calming presence that your child can rely on to support them through life's ups and downs. You'll be able to reframe stress-inducing moments into learning moments, giving your children the tools to get through challenges with grace. You'll be able to create an atmosphere of serene peacefulness instead of enhancing tantrums and meltdowns with harried and hectic responses. Gain the skills to actively guide your children through tantrum-inducing moments thereby ensuring a smoother and more successful experience as they continue to develop, and flip your automatic responses to those of humor and love instead of modeling frantic or furious responses, which your children will learn to regard as the norm. Uh, before I share the link, which I'm going to get to right now in just a minute, I do want to let you know about one more exciting surprise. Um, if you've been on our webinars before, you may have heard about our new and exciting offer, but we had one of our members, a longtime member, email us and request a raffle when we do all of our uh, classes so that she can try and attend as many as possible. So we are going to do a raffle today and everybody who buys and registers right now on the line while we're still here for the next half hour or so um, will automatically get entered into a raffle and we will pick a winner uh, tomorrow and that person will actually get their um, full course for free so they'll get a refund immediately and get to go on this journey. Um, for no cost at all. So make sure to jump on and register now so that you can automatically get entered into that raffle. Um, and again, let me just go ahead and let you know the prices. I know people are saying, but how much is it? So today, as I mentioned in the very beginning, we're offering a special discount for people who attended today. And you'll actually get the full classes. Um, it's actually eight classes, um, two Q&A sessions plus how to foster independence and motivation, um, helping kids establish healthy habits, mastering emotional freedom technique, um, the fightless marriage, plus you'll have notes and homework for immediate application, um, a personal membership area where all of your materials and classes will be accessible 24 six, and all of that you can get for just $3.97 as a platinum member, or you can also choose to become a basic member today, which will give you access to all the live classes plus the recordings available to you in your own personal membership area. So as a basic member, you'll be able to join all of the live classes and, the, um, and have the recordings. The platinum membership includes all of those special bonuses um, as well as the full eight weeks of live classes. So I'm going to go ahead and put your link in your chat box. And for those of you who are on the phone, I will just say it out loud here. It's www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash toddler. Um, there you go. I put it into your chat box. You can actually copy and paste that out um, into another browser so you can still listen on the line as we answer questions, but you can make sure to go grab your spot and register now. Um, and when you're done registering, if you could just come back to your chat box and let me know that you're in, just your first name and the words I'm in. Um, I like to keep a kind of a tally of how many people are registered, how many um, are in the raffle, 
and um, spots are limited so it's important for me to kind of have that idea so just come on back and let me know the words I'm in and I would be happy to welcome you if you're having trouble registering or if you need any help have questions please just put your name and your telephone number right here in the chat box. Um, I've got Hannah here with me, Tsipouris here on the line, um, and everyone is ready to answer any questions. We can give you a call um, as soon as possible and again, help you register over the phone. When you click to register, you will also notice there are payment plan options. Um, so we can make it as easy as possible for um, people to join. You know, I don't want that that financial constraint to be the reason that you don't get the question the answers to the questions that you need so badly um, especially uh, with battling your inner toddler battling the challenges of raising toddlers and raising children um, who are experiencing all of these um, personality traits as well so again if you have any questions or need help just go ahead and put your name and your telephone number in here um, and in the meantime, I will have this up on your screen as well, www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash toddler. Um, I, do, I do already see somebody who has registered, so welcome, um, LZ. Welcome, it's so wonderful to have you, and welcome, Naomi. Great to have you as well. Um, are the bonuses books? No, the bonuses are actually all... Um, webinars as well. They're pre-recorded sessions um, so that you can listen at your convenience. They're all um, available to you. You'll have a personal membership area and you can listen to those classes at your convenience. Take notes, re-listen. You'll have those once you purchase for a lifetime. Um, I don't see the link. Let me put it there again one more time. It's www.jewishworkshops.com and then forward slash toddler. Um, Sarhan, I do want to get to some of these questions. And sorry, let me just find, there was one that came in a little bit earlier. Here we go. Um, are different personalities more prone to toddler behavior than others? And are those who have never acted like a toddler at the proper two-year-old time more prone to being a toddler later in life at a different stage instead? Do people get it out of their system? And is it better for toddlers to act as toddlers at the right age so they are less likely to act like a toddler later in life? That was kind of three questions all in one, but okay. yeah. I thought it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because the characteristics we looked at, um, you know, not wanting to go to bed on time, um, want uh, thinking only about ourselves, uh, feeling anxious, having trouble regulating our, um, tempers or whatever we've looked at you know a number of different things our, our risk um, tolerance all this stuff they're all individuals so that yes we have different um, tendencies to exhibit toddler um, behaviors throughout life or, be, or toddler thinking or basically to be in the toddler ego state as we call it but um, we all have a toddler ego state. So uh, just for example, the feeling of anxiety or helplessness or vulnerability is just a human feeling. But some people are prone to have that feeling more often and more easily than other people based on birth, okay? Their genetics, that's all. Um, they'll fall into it easier. So when they're in the toddler stage, they actually might feel, um, like the, we, we have fearless toddlers, right? The one who's on top of the fridge. Um, and then we have uh, toddlers that won't do anything, won't try anything, won't say anything, and that's their different nature. Okay, so and the parenting problems that go, you know, with those different natures will be different parenting problems. And if you're living with a fearless, you know, um, one person who who goes towards risk, that'll be quite different for you than one who is risk avoidant and doesn't want to do anything with the slightest, you know, lack of stability in in its characters. So. Uh, the behaviors will be there in different ratios and different amounts, but we all have this toddler thing and we'll all have it throughout life. So I don't think that we can discharge it <laughs> by age three or whatever and then just be free of it. I, I think it's a human, uh, it's just going to be a passenger on our bus. That's all. 
Great, thank you so much. Um, I do have another question. Um, I've been practicing clear method from other workshops that I've taken from you. Um, so many of my children's behaviors are coming from their inner toddler. So in the past, I'd be ignoring as much as I can according to the principle that negative behaviors should not be reinforced and then finding positive behavior to reinforce it. So if my seven-year-old is screaming and refusing to take a bath, normally I'd ignore it and say something like, if you're ready in 10 minutes, then there's still time for a story. And then when she starts using a calmer tone of voice, then using clear method. Is that um, something that we're going to delve into in this course? Is it going to be similar in the um, method? Um, there will be some similarities in method because one thing I'm fairly consistent in is how I think about um, what needs to be done to change behavior. So you will hear things you've heard before, but when we hear things um, with modifications or different emphasis on different parts, for example, the point you're making there that attending to um, negative behavior, like tantruming, for example, in an older child, could possibly reinforce that behavior. The emphasis there, uh, which is seen in my book, um, Better Behavior Now, and in the course we did, uh, Jewish workshops called uh, Dynamic Discipline, I think, um, those emphasized the rewiring aspect or the wiring aspect of behavior, the neurological consequences of talking to our kids at certain times and in certain ways, very, very detailed actually, okay? But it was all about the neurology. Um, so our emphasis here is more on the psychology. Um, so you won't be hearing so much about the neurology. It'll be a side point here because it hasn't disappeared as a fact. Okay, I haven't changed my mind about that at all. Um, but when we come at things from different angles, we just really go deeper and deeper into ourselves with more certainty about how we should be approaching something. And that certainty itself strengthens the adult ego state. So we want that certainty. Okay. Um, so what we're going to be looking at here is the psych psychological state called the inner toddler. Um, so if your child is having his meltdown, well, one thing is we know we can't say much to him. Uh, we know that from the wiring angle as well. But here we're going to know it because he's a inner toddler, words are going to mean nothing to him. The piece that we're adding is what our body's doing while we're waiting for him to get back online with his adult ego state, which will be a seven-year-old adult ego state, ego state, but it's a lot better than his inner toddler for our purposes of education. So um, while we're waiting in that waiting period, there's things that we're going to be able to do that we're going to look at um, in this course. So it'll be a, a little bit different there. Um, it's not that we do nothing and just wait because we're, we're actually always doing something. And here we're going to be consciously doing what we feel will be best for the toddler. Okay, so it's just continuing to expand our skill set. Excellent, thank you. Um, I just want to go ahead and welcome our newest members. Welcome Fagy, welcome Khani, um, and welcome Max. Wonderful to have all of you. Oh, sorry, I missed Esther here. Um, welcome to all of you. Um, just a reminder, when you register, please come on back and let me know um, with the words I'm in and your first name or your initials. Um, and you're automatically entered into the raffle. So somebody was asking, how do I get entered? You're automatically entered as soon as you register right here on the line while we're still live. Um, if you still have questions or need help, again, please put your name and phone number in. Once we close up the webinar today, um, unfortunately, we won't have your information. So if you have questions or need help, please put your phone number so that we can reach out to you. Uh, there are some more questions here. How do you handle the toddler who screams and doesn't want to get dressed for daycare when you are under time pressure to get out the door and start work? I said it was a hard age, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's so hard and dealing with a toddler when we have, you know, adult, um, I don't know, demands on our time, right? Like we have to go to work. So we don't have all day to radiate loving safety, do we? <laughs> But well, we know that um, we don't need to say much to the toddler because what we also don't have time for it is wasting our breath. So, you know, 
toddlers are physically small um, because adults sometimes do need to take physical charge of a toddler. It, it has to be that way and we have to be prepared for that. But that's once children grow bigger and soon we cannot solve our problems by, you know, holding a child down. We're not going to do that, right? But a toddler who is flailing, let's say, well, we need to get those clothes on. Let's say there's no babysitter. We've already missed the number of days of work that we can miss without being fired. It's serious and we have to get out the door. Staying untriggered ourselves will be an important part of this. We know the kid is having trouble um, regulating emotions because that's characteristic of the age, not because he's a brat. And this makes a very big difference, just understanding that he's in a developmental stage, which is an appropriate stage for him. We want him to now know what he wants. And what he wants is to not get dressed. That's what, we, that's what he knows. And so we're, we're happy that he has um, an investment in himself and his preferences. That's a good thing in the developmental stage department. Um, so we're not mad at him for being a toddler. And I'll, I'll say that a lot of us, even that little piece of information is so important. I just wanna pause there because a lot of people are mad at their toddlers for just being a toddler for being irrational, for being dangerous, for not listening, for having temper tantrums. And that um, anger, which puts us, if we refer back to our polyvagal class that we did a few months ago, into the sympathetic nervous system, um, and it triggers our inner toddler. And now we're screaming at the kid, I have not got time for this. I have to go to work. Put your hands down me now. Okay, like, you know, that's, that's as we're trying to get him dressed. Now, we're going to try and get him dressed because we have to go. Um, and so let's say it's winter and he cannot be carried out in a blanket in the car. He's going to have to have some clothes on. So now we know that he's not, he's a victim, so to speak, of his own developmental journey here. And he wants what he wants and he doesn't know how to calm himself down. The best we can do for him is going to be a nonverbal wave of calm energy that is going to be produced by our own certainty that what we're doing is fine. Okay, so we know we're not abusing him. We're not traumatizing him for life as we do our best to get a sweater and pants on or whatever, okay? Uh, it's, it's not gonna be the best dressing occasion of the, of the year, but just something warm on him so that we can transfer him to the car. And we're just gonna do that pretty silently. Honey, we we're going, okay? And your certainty that you're going and that you're allowed to force your child to get dressed, okay? Because one of the things we're gonna see in the course is just how damaging parental uncertainty and insecurity can be, um, and also misunderstanding the motives of the inner child in different age groups, not just in actual toddlers, but in the inner toddlers all along. We misunderstand the motives that's when we're going to get triggered. So um, yeah, it's going to be a matter of accessing our nurturing adult state and plowing on, okay? <laughs> you Sorry, have... just wanted, yeah, I just wanted to have myself on mute while you're talking, but I'm here now. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, that was fantastic, thank you. And I really am looking forward to all of these uh, answers here myself, dealing with two beautiful and wonderful toddlers. Um, I think that all of those things that we mentioned earlier, the good and the bad, definitely permeate in my mind as we're doing this class today. So um, I do wanna go ahead and welcome our newest members. Uh, welcome Naomi and welcome Shira, welcome Gitty, um, welcome Ella. And um, yes, there are some people who are asking for help registering um, and needing help with some payment plans. Please just come and put your um, 
your first name and your phone number right here into the chat box where you're um, asking for help. I don't want to call your names out. Some people are also looking for anonymity, um, but just please come on back if you need help. Um, if you're looking for payment plan options or if you just need help registering, please put your phone number in and we will give you a quick call as soon as we're done here um, in the next 15 minutes or so. Um, you will absolutely still get entered into the raffle. You're, um, I can see that you're in and you're interested and you want to um, just, you just need help with the actual payment. So please just put your phone number in so we can give you a call and help you. Um, there are, oh, and welcome Malka. There was another question that was just here. Oh, is this course um, for kids ages six to 18? Just, I'm, I know the answer, but I want to clarify for people who are also wondering if you don't actually have a child that is of toddler age, you know, as um, Sarkhana was saying, you know, two and a half or three and a half, um, will this still be applicable and the best route to learn? Yes, we're not going to, toddler issues um, will be mentioned, but they're not, that's not actually going to be the main focus of the course. The main focus is going to be the inner toddler. So you will learn enough um, to deal with an actual toddler if you happen to have one. Um, just like today, I think, you know, we've learned something about dealing with an inner, uh, an actual toddler. Mm -hmm. um, but the emphasis will be on the inner toddler. And we didn't talk that much today about our own inner toddler, but honestly, for a lot of us, our own inner toddler is out of control. So <laughs> that's a particular interest of mine, and we will be yeah. exploring that. Excellent. Okay, great. Um, and I actually had another really nice message here. Uh, there's so many coming in. I really enjoy your parenting posts and so wish that I had them while I was raising my children. Um, but now I'm very involved with our grandchildren, which is such a blessing. Um, would this be a good course to help me support my own children in raising their children? You know nothing helps your own children, right? <laughs> it's okay. Um, I just think that the more we know about psychology, the better we're going to do in every relationship that we have with everybody. Um, you know, the uh, adult children have very active inner toddlers, and we talked about irrationality, fear, vulnerability, shame, uh, helplessness, all sorts of things. Um, but we also have the inner teenager, which is like um, has a, another flavor to the defiant uh, edge. We should have a course on the inner teenager, I imagine, also. But anyways, um, when you understand the manifestations of the inner toddler, you'll be better at helping your adult children or um, parenting your adult children in every way. Because um, what happens to adult children who are going through something new, like raising their own children, uh, is that their inner toddlers, their strong-willed, I know what I want, part of them is triggered. So it does make grandparenting um, sometimes challenging in the sense that it's hard to get your adult child to take your wisdom, your years of experience, your advice, whatever, into consideration. That's one part of it. Um, you kind of have to circumvent or know how to deal with their strong-willed inner toddler to be of any use to them in some ways. But in, I'm just going to say that in general, even if you had no children, this course would be useful because you will always run into other people's inner toddlers everywhere you go. So I, I just, and, and also I'm partial to psychology in general, so, and the study of relationships. So I just don't see how it could fail to help everybody with anything that they're doing. Um, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me get to this one too. We're running out of time here, so I want to get to as many as possible. Uh, if kids were raised by parents who were often triggering each other to be in toddler state, can the, those children raised by toddler parents essentially become functional adults or would they need a lot of therapy to learn what wasn't modeled? You know, I think if you take all my courses here at Jewish Workshops and probably all the other courses that are offered, that you don't need so much therapy. Um, sometimes psychoeducation, that is learning what should have been done. We're really talking about the target behaviors. If you'll take my language from dynamic discipline or better behavior now, the target behaviors, what should be done, what needs to be done. That's what we're doing when we take our information from webinars and stuff. We're getting what should be done. And as we start to implement that, we then get the neurological rewiring in our own brains. Um, 
I think that the study of parenting is crucial. The study of psychology as it impacts raising children is crucial because therapy gets rid of our pain, but doesn't tell us what we need to do. It's kind of like, um, I don't want to say it's exactly the same, but let's say punishment can stop a behavior, but it doesn't wire in a behavior, which is why we cannot rely on discipline alone to raise children effectively, right? Um, in fact, we have to be very careful with discipline, as you know. So, um, but it's not the same thing, but therapy helps us to heal our wounds, which does not automatically produce a new program in the brain for parenting. You're more likely to get that through the cortex, the prefrontal cortex, when you're listening. Any blocks you have to implementing what you learn will be because now you're triggered or you're, you know, the programming that you've received, it presents a challenge. Nonetheless, taking as many courses as you can, delving deeply into it, works around that challenge to a great extent and using the techniques, the mind-body techniques that can um, break the wiring that was laid down, such as emotional freedom technique, which is included in one of the bonuses here. Um, that is a tremendously, hugely powerful self-healing way to remove the remnants of traumatological, traumatized wiring, okay? Uh, to get that out of your brain, just through self-help. So, um, and of course we have a trauma course here that I've done as well. But anyways, the point is, I think you can get miles and miles uh, ahead with just taking these kinds of courses and applying them so that they, they become wired into your system, which will heal your own system as it heals your children. Amazing, thank you. Um, I see that um, so many people are waiting for their phone calls to help register. Please be patient. Um, we will definitely um, get your information, give you a call in, um, very shortly, uh, give you a chance to just listen to the last few minutes here while we're still on the line. But again, please don't worry. Um, stay by your phone right after we're finished here and you will get a call so that we can get you registered and you will automatically be entered into that raffle. Um, otherwise, I'm going to um, put the link one more time into your chat box for those um, who don't have additional questions or need any specific help, but make sure to grab your spot now and you can still get entered into the raffle. It's just www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash toddler. Um, and if you need any specific help, please make sure to come back and just put your telephone number in. If you already have, then we've got it right here with us um, and we'll give you a call shortly. Um, let me see here. There was just another question. Um, I teach toddlers and a big part of what I do is explain everything to them. <laughs> now it's time to eat. Let's go to the table, etc. How does that work with this concept of not using words? It's really, I wouldn't call those examples um, explanation. What you're doing is you're pairing simple words like eat and table with something that you're now demonstrating with your body. Time to eat, let's go to the table. Okay, that's not a whole long story of words and it doesn't apply the same way as I was giving examples here in terms of why you should or should not do a specific behavior. Okay, you're giving um, simple instructions, which are like the way we build vocabulary with children. This is a cup, cup, drink, drink, <laughs> you know. Um, it's not it's necessary for the child to be able to decipher um, logical connections and, and reasoning between words or to comprehend anything. They're just really learning vocabulary um, and watching from your behavior. So that's how, it's not the same thing as what I was talking about, basically. If you start explaining to the child um, why she needs to sit, you know, and eat nicely, that's what's going to be lost on the toddler. But the command, sit, <laughs> eat, <laughs> you know, you know, it's good for animals too. I mean, that level, but your animal's not going to understand the reason for anything. And toddlers cognitively are closer to our pets than they are to our, you know, teenagers or whatever in this regard, okay? 
Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, with only just a few minutes left here, um, I really want Sarahana to kind of pass the microphone back over to you um, just so that we can wrap things up and leave everyone who's still on the line. Thank God we've got hundreds of people here um, who've stuck with us and I'd love for you to be able to have those few minutes to um, leave them with some parting words. I hope to see you soon <laughs> in my course, right? Um, and I think I, I think I've conveyed that um, just it's we're going to look at something just through a new lens. And every time somebody says something, it goes into the puzzle that's already in your brain. As parents, as human beings, as people, as spouses, you already know quite a lot. Okay, you you know how to turn on that computer and get to here. What we're doing is coming in from another angle, another door that expands the puzzle pieces and makes you that much more effective, that much more calm and safe in your own world. Um, because everything that's kind of out of control for us, which is what the inner toddler is going to present to us as an external stimuli, it's always going to be slightly out of control because inner toddlers are so out of control. They're, yeah, they're very happy, they're very sweet, they're very cute, whatever, but we looked at, they're very risky, they're very, they're, they've got big emotions that they don't know how to manage, they're irrational and logical, um, you know, so there's a wild feeling in dealing with the, with toddlers and with inner toddlers. So this is going to just give you a new angle and another piece of the puzzle on how to approach your colleagues, your bosses, the, the people who work for you, uh, how to approach your neighbors and your spouse and your in-laws and, <laughs> you know, the gang, the whole gang. It's it's just, I, I just like to keep learning things myself and layering them on. And I kind of assume that everybody else likes to do that too, but I know that we don't all like to do it, but I find it gives us a better power position and a calmer position. Um, a healthier position in ourselves. So I do invite you to come explore this with me and see what new ways of life you can look, um, you know, with, that you can learn and apply for yourself. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here with us, Sarah Khanna, and thank you to everyone who joined in from all over the world. Thank you for spending your time with us and learning such um, fantastic tips and techniques. And I cannot wait to see as many of you on the line next week. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually just leave the webinar open for a few minutes. You won't see it, Sarhan, anymore and you won't hear us, um, but I'm gonna leave it open just so that you can get your phone number in if you still do have questions or need help registering. As I mentioned before, if you've already put your phone number in, then we've got it and we'll give you a call. So please um, be available for the next little bit and expect a call from us. Um, in the meantime, if you haven't and you still need help registering, come on back and let us know um, over the next few minutes before we close up so that we can help you register and get into our raffle. Um, again, just a reminder, the next class is going to be our very first class of the series is going to be next Thursday, um, 12 p.m. Eastern. We are looking forward. And thank you so much, Sarahana. I can see in the chat box, thank you. You've really already <laughs> changed my life so much. Thank you again. Um, looking forward to next week. So such wonderful feedback. And thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Sounds good.